Happiness is beautiful. It's a kind of reality. Happiness is the highest good. Happiness is free. So let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy. Welcome to the Happiness Show. This, I'm Claudia Basson, and I'm here with George Ortega, and uh, we're here to talk about happiness because happiness is, always has been, always will be the point of it all. Thanks for tuning in with us tonight. Tonight's topic is about love. Good thing, love. We love, we love love, and in fact, I have to just say quickly before we get into anything really juicy that the MTA strike is over. Yes, and we love that. That's something worth loving. Oh, yeah. Everybody's going to get a ride now, which is great. Well, that's a good point because, you know, generally we tend to think of love in terms of, um, you know, other people or animals or God or something. But, you know, we can, we can love things. We can love our experiences. And exactly, and we can love the experience of either, you know, trying to get communal with our with people in our neighborhoods and get a ride to work and it, what I loved about the MTA strike was that everybody jumped into the car together people were together right. to get to some place they had to be at a time of year this is a few days before Christmas that it just was important to, to be out and hanging out and sharing stuff so I think you know although people were struggling I was watching the news like you know here and there and people were interviewed and they were sort of going you know, doing the best I can do. They had a great attitude. They were, found the most happiness they could possibly find at a tough time. Cool. Yeah. So love, George. Happiness and love. Okay. So let's, yeah, let's start out with um, what is love? Mm, how do we define love? Um, I think, you know, basically it's, it's like, it's an emotion, but it's kind of like, you know what I think it is? It's like um, love is, is, is liking something a lot, right? But it's more than that. I think, I think the essence of love is when you love something, you care deeply about its welfare, right? Do you need it? Um, sometimes. I mean, I, I think, you know, sometimes you, there, you can, like, yeah, if, if sometimes, um, you know, loving someone or something just feels so good that, I mean, we can develop needs for what we love or what makes us feel really good. Mm -hmm. so absolutely. But, um... You love it so much. So it's beyond like. So on that continuum of, you know, I don't like it. I hate it. I don't like it. I like it a little. I like it a lot. I love it. It's at the end. It's at the far right. Yes. Yeah. And also it's the idea that it's, um, it's more than just, you know, liking something. Uh, it tends to be more than that. It, it tends to be like having a, a great concern for that something and usually I think when we think of love it's about other people so what happens is like this is oh, well maybe not, let, let but me finish yeah why this is so appropriate to this show is that um you know this show is about happiness and when we love someone you know really our expression of love um really is about their happiness I mean like that's um that's mm. You know, if, 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 if our love, if we're expressing our love, the, the intended outcome is like to, to um, facilitate happiness for the other person while, while we feel, you know, this great sense of giving ourselves. So bringing love into a relationship, you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Love between people, not love of things or the sunrise or the outdoors or your pet or, you know, the settlement of a strike. But you're talking about love between two human beings? Well, you know, I, I, I think, I mean, I mentioned... Because I looked at love when we were first talking about love as a huge, you know, entity that encompasses just about anything that gives you a loving feeling, anything. You're absolutely right. I mean, I, I, I mentioned it um, specifically about people. It's because when we, when we tend to love, it's generally about other people or our, our pets. That's when we use love, you mean, the most. Like when we say, I love. Exactly. Oh. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I think the difference is, like, for example, a sunset or, you know, nature, um, a painting, music, that, that doesn't need us, you know, it, it doesn't benefit in any way yes. from our loving it, mm -hmm. whereas when we love other people, we get that, 
that additional benefit that makes us happier as we're, you know, helping another to become happier. Okay, yeah, and the way it might benefit, by the way, these inanimate things that you name, is, is that you give more to it when, you know, I mean, the art can't love you back, but it can provide you with the venue to express more love and with lots of other things, and like the Happiness Show provides us with that we get happy doing it. You know, we love doing the Happiness Show because it's, it, it's great. We can give it to whoever wants to stream it into their homes or whoever can tune in on a Thursday night. And, and an art piece, like when we had that guest who was an artist, it brings love to people. They may love it. They may love that, and that's why they go and they buy it. You know, so it can, I think it does. I mean, it has like an energy to it, a love energy to it. You know, it's yeah. kind of cosmic. I don't know. It sounds wacky. Call me crazy. But I think that it has its own energy. Well, you know, I, um, it doesn't have to be, you know. Ar Aristotle referred to um, happiness as the highest good. Absolutely. And it just makes a lot of sense because um, actually there was, there was another philosopher, um, what's his name, Jonathan Locke, I think it was, that um, he referred to goodness. Any kind of goodness is what creates happiness. Goodness. You know? So I, I was thinking, I was thinking like... Um, what did he mean by goodness? Hang on a sec. Well, I mean, because, like, you know, we use goodness a lot in, you know, in just our everyday thinking. I mean, it's so important to be good, you know, especially growing up and all. But we're never, like, you know, taught exactly what it is. But when you... When you say good, do you mean well-behaved or do you mean good? In, 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 in every sense. And well, what we do or... Oh, well, no, well-behaved. Goodness. Eth ethical. Ethical, oh, moral. Oh, okay. Right. All right. Yes. Right. When, we, when we beha we're behaving rightly according to, to you know good ethics, um, then what we're doing really is facilitating um, happiness of others. We're, we're um, make is it making it much easier for others to, to feel happier, maybe giving happiness in that way. Mm -hmm. so, so then, the, you know, the question might arise that um, with love, you know, it, it could be that love is actually the highest form of happiness. You know, that's that's something that, that seems to make sense because um, there are many ways we can find happiness. Some are, are not so good at all, you know, because they would actually even diminish the happiness of others. Whereas love, you know, I think love would probably feel the best for us as individuals. You know, it, 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 you know I don't know if, I'm not sure there have been um, studies on this, but it would seem that, that um, the happiness that comes from love is a very high form of happiness. And then, you know... Like a, like a uh, grade. If you're grading happiness, it's grade A. I would think so. I mean, you know, there's the happiness of watching a TV show, but, you know, compared to, like, the happiness of, like, feeling deep love for, for a person or, you know, music or something, I think the love is, is, is far, far more keen. Mm. And then, then the love has the additional benefit of, um, you know, and uh, again, why, why I think it could be considered the highest happiness is because, you know, it has, I think, the, the greatest potential to make others and uh, to make the world happier. Which is the most important point of, of happiness. Well, I, in a sense, yeah, because, I mean, like, you know, it, it doesn't seem right it doesn't seem just or good that, um, for example, half of the world is just like not very happy at all. I mean, they're, you know, um, they're very poor or they just don't understand how to be happy, you know, for different circumstances. So that, that just, you know, you know. Well, you know, we have found, though, that the p poor countries, there are poor countries that have high happiness quotient. So yeah. So it's not money related. No, no, we're... Um, it's it might be that they're starving, and how does one feel happy when they, they have no food in their you know, stomachs and they have nothing, you know, to sustain their lives with that's nutritional. So that would be, you know, well, that would be something that would keep them unhappy. But, yeah, a lot of poor countries are happy countries. Well, all right, here's... I mean, I, I bring up the, the fact that... Um, that you know some poor company co countries are happier like nigeria is nigeria. like the happiest country in the world mm -hmm. they're not very rich and there's they're a small wealthy component to puerto rico right but um, the rest puerto of rico. the country is isn't that isn't that wealthy well 
Well, in the United States, well, so no, Puerto Rico is Puerto at Rico, a very high rated. Puerto Rico, they're in the top five. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Puerto Rico is, is extremely happy. Mm -hmm. um, by a different measure, even happier, I think, than um, Nigeria. But um, going back to the issue of like love and happiness, I think that's a perfect example because like. So maybe it's more love uh, and. Oh no no! But all right, the thing, Claudia, is that. Um, you know, while there are some countries that are poor and very happy, right. that gives us great hope, because w if a if a country that has so little that you know the people are living on three dollars a day or something can be very happy, that gives us all great hope that it's not about money, it's not about these material comforts. Right. So how many how many people, billions of people, you say live on three dollars a day? Well, about half the planet, so that's half like the planet. over three billion people. Three billion people living on three dollars a day. American dollars? American dollars, yeah. What we can buy here in America, you know, for three dollars a day, that's what they live on. And, and this is a, and these are, by the way, these are, fair, some of these countries are happier than American All right, you know, people. Not many. I mean, again, Nigeria, um, there, there, are, there aren't that many. You know, really, most the the general trend is that the richer the a country is, the happier they'll be. There are some anal anomalies, um, like Japan is is very rich. You know, extremely rich compared to you know almost the entire world. But um, but they're just not very happy at all. There is there a difference in the way culture views happiness and and values happiness and can maybe then measure happiness? I don't know, happiness? but I'm getting back to the love. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so love, you know, is conveyed in every country. Right. Well, here's the thing, um, and you bring up a great point, Claudia, because um, the thing is, like, love and happiness, um, I think the, the people who need love the most are the people who are the least happy. And that, that, that applies to the people around us and, like, let's say people with whom we work, people around in our community, in our family. And that also applies to the world in general. I mean, like, you know, we can talk about, like, loving people around us, people who are, like, less happy and all. But, you know, it, it has to be more than just the feeling. It has to be, like, a love that's really expressed. Okay, so expressed love is important. Mm -hmm. And expressed love can come in many different, you know, forms. It could be a bowl of rice. You know, when we were, I'm, I'm a sailor, as you know, and on a crew, if somebody's making some sandwiches for the crew as we're competing and they're handing up sandwiches and you go to take a bite of these sandwiches, it's like, like one slice of something in your sandwich and you go, you know, one of, somebody once said, where's the love? And give me some more love on this sandwich. So possibly love can be equated with you know, providing some of the basic, like Maslow's basic needs. Well, that's such an excellent point because I think, I think love, you know, has to take into account um, the other person's needs. In other words, that's you, right. know, you know, if a person has, let's say, a lot of money, you know, it, it may feel like, you know, loving to give that person more, but it's just not what they need. Whereas, you know, a person who maybe who has a lot of money and isn't very happy right. may feel, um, you know, the, the best kind of love to give that kind of person is really like advice, um, suggestions on how to enjoy life more. Absolutely. Whereas, and, and vice versa, you know, with, with the poor, you know, just um, that's, that's why, you know, um, this, this show is really for the West, for the rich countries to a great extent. But, you know, I began to feel guilty. Um, I began to feel that considering there, you know, half the planet just isn't e eating. I mean, there, you know, um, 20,000 kids are dying every day of, of hunger and malnutrition, and, and half the planet is living in poverty that, that makes it extremely difficult to be very happy. That, that you know, um, I wanted to do some, some other work to help them, and that's why, you know, I created this other site to, to promote this idea to, to help them. Um, you know, each time we buy a product, we can be, like, helping people in need because, you know, um, it isn't just about the training. It's about, you know, it's about just basic needs. What's the other site? Because I don't think it's on the credits for people to take a look at if they right. want to. Can we do yeah, that? Yeah, sure. It's, it's um, ProfitDonationCapitalism.org. ProfitDonationCapitalism.org. Capitalism, yeah. And like the Paul Newman thing? You buy a sauce or well, that's popcorn and he donates the money. It's such an amazing idea, yeah, because... I mean, Paul Newman has one compa company. He's, um, it started in 1982, 
and he's generated over 150 million dollars for thousands of charities. Staggering. But then you have like um, UNICEF, that's a, actually a not-for-profit organization. Just by selling greeting cards alone, they've generated over a billion dollars to to you know to help people throughout the world. So the the idea is that like if tens of thousands of, of companies were doing the same thing, selling products, not to make people who are already way too rich richer, but to help people in, in real need, not just in other parts of, of the world, but here and, and, and everywhere, then that would be such a wonderful way to make this, this entire world so much happier. Absolutely. So let's do that. That's all about love, because that is about wealthy people having everything they need except maybe a little guidance to help them let go of the obsessive compulsive need to make more money and maybe that'll make them happier and let them give which always makes people happy I mean I love this time of year because I love giving everybody everything and so you know giving people whatever money they may need to subsist or a meal or some, some new furniture you know, that's donated to them the, through UNICEF or Salvation Army. Like, I know that there's a big, big Brothers, is, you know, I got flyers in my mailbox for everybody right now, and, I, and I, everybody's getting something. Why? Because it feels good. That's what love is. That's like giving someone love. So these companies, if we, if we can get people to really start this, this up, like, in a big way. I mean, I know there are big celebrities who have done this. You know, to, on a scale, I don't know, I don't follow it, I don't read People magazine or watch any of this stuff, so I don't know what they do. I know they, they entertain me, but I don't know if they're really giving, you know, across the board. I know, like, you know, they get a lot of publicity, I don't know if it's all about getting publicity. So help me understand that. Paul Newman, he's been on the shelf for, I, I can't even remember when he started, but I've always wanted to, I mean, I remember when he first started with his, uh, his lines of his food products, I was like, Yes, I have to get that. Even if I don't want it, I'll get it. I'll give it to my mom. Because it was a great idea, because it gives back to people, because it's part of the, the whole. Yeah, the, the wonderful thing about these kinds of companies also is that, you know, this, this world, I mean, we, we, here in America, we tend to think we're, we're, we're very generous. I mean, that's, that's what the, the common, it's, a, it's such a myth, because like, like in terms of foreign aid that, that we give to other con countries, you know, they did a survey, the University of Michigan did a survey a while back, and they asked people, well, how much do we give, you know, to other countries? And, you know, the, the average answer was, well, about 15%, you know? And, and then, then they, would, um, they would ask the people, well, well, how much should we be giving? Right? And people would say, well, about 5%, you know? People think we give so much, and Wait a minute, so th that's the defined amount, 5%? No, 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 that's how much people, you know, think that we should be giving, even though they think we actually give 15% of our gross domestic product, okay. of, of our GDP, okay? And, but the, um, the reality of, of how little we, we care for people is, is reflected by this statistic, this fact that we actually give one one thousandth of one percent of our GDP, which it's not even one percent. Wow. Um, somebody just wrote a book recently um, describing how if the industrialized countries like the United States gave just one percent, poverty be over. There'd be no more poverty in the world. Yet we're, you know, we're so selfish, greedy. I mean, that doesn't make people happy now, does it? doesn't make us no. happy. I'm not happy hearing that. Well, no, no, yeah. And, you know, but see, when I say that, um, you know, I've done shows. I mean, this is a bit of an aside, but, like, we didn't create ourselves. You know, we didn't, you know, it's like, I think if, if you asked if, her, if a person had the ability to be as good as they could, I think we would all be really good and just, you know, we're like, we're, we're working with what we're I think we're we given. do have the ability, but I think, uh, like you're just about to say, I'm sorry to interrupt, we're working with what we have. Absolutely. And that's why I don't blame people for how we are, because that's how we were made. That's right. But the beauty, the beauty of this profit donation capitalism idea is that it doesn't change our human nature. In other words, like, instead of buying a soup from Campbell's, we can buy a soup from a company that's going to feed people or it's going to, you know, um, provide money for medical research. So it's, it's being able to share love and give love without it actually it costing us any money. 
Okay, so as a revelation that I'm having as I'm watching you be so passionate about this idea, in, is, in the way you are passionate and very quietly passionate, George is very quiet about his passion, I think we should really donate, dedicate a, a piece of each show to this, to this concept so that we continue to drive it, continue to feed energy into it, continue to remind people who are watching the, these shows mm -hmm. that this is, you know, profit donation is really a, a key way to spread the wealth that America has and help, you know, and help to just spread love. It's really about love and happiness. It's, it's a way to meet needs. And when your needs are met, you experience, you know, love. And as a result, you, you feel happier. And that's the whole goal. Claudia, that's a great idea. That's a great idea because we, you know, we devote so many of the shows to like happiness skills and, and you know, happiness. Happiness camps. Yeah, things, things like where we're learning. Where and these are things that happen in America, art and music. We want to do a music thing and, you know, that's all great and beautiful and wonderful and, and it's important. But then there comes to a point where, you know, let's get to the big picture and, and what's the point of it all? And that's why you, you open every show saying that. It's the point of it all. And so how do we generate more happiness? It's the plan. The plan, that's a great plan. Why? Because it, the, 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 it rocks in the cradle of capitalism, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's not about putting money in people's pockets. It's about putting food in people's stomachs, shelter, relieving people from their their pain. It's about people that are still healing from, from Hurricane Katrina. Kids who are doing art therapy with people who are still going down there to help. I mean, it's, it's, it's an endless need that we always have on this globe. That's such, that's such a perfect example like with Katrina, uh, New Orleans and all. I mean there's so many people that want to help but they don't have the money. It's not that they're necessarily greedy or selfish but there are like a lot of poor people. They just but if they were to go into supermarkets and there were these products, you know, and there could be dozens, there could Absolutely be like great. hundreds of, of products. They have to buy these products. Exactly. They have to buy some products, so why not buy a product that makes them at least then feel that they can purchase this product and by standing there online and giving their money and taking home and eating this, they're still helping other people. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is like with so many products, especially like food products, they're not difficult to replicate, you know, they, you can get it like a, a chef to, to just, you know, come up with like a cereal that tastes just as good as the ones out there or, you know, any kind Absolutely. of like... Absolutely. Yeah. So what if we started, like, l let's do something more powerful than, you know, I like talking about it and sharing it with, any, with everybody. Uh, let's, t let's try to talk to some local, um, like, say, gourmet places that I love to go to on my way home from work because I don't want to cook and I can afford it because I work and I live in America and I have that privilege of being able to stop at a place in Scarsdale on Garth Road called Ruffle Feathers, which I love. And the guys are so cool and fun. They always get, want to taste this. I'm making this. Try this. And it's just happiness. You go in there, it smells good. How about talking to one of these kinds of, of places about, I don't know, just getting involved in, 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 a, in a small cap kind of a idea of, of this profit you know, okay so, um, there I think there are generally two kinds of people in, in, in a certain sense one kind that will like create a business because they enjoy making money that's a challenge for them they really get a lot out of it they mm. enjoy providing a service they enjoy that's succeeding the second that thing way. you mean that's that's one kind of person. Uh, one thing is m money. I enjoy providing oh, service. Oh no, 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 but I think that goes along with it. They, uh, um, they enjoy making money by providing, by like meeting a need, by like determining. Oh, I do that for a living. Absolutely, and yeah. that's that's one way. Then, but uh, you know, okay, that's not bad, right? No, well, <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, I, I have tremendous satisfaction from helping people, and right. some people don't pay me, that's and that's okay. Yeah. The other way, though, is. Um, you know, in, in determining who to, who to um, you know, present this to, there's another kind of person um, to whom money just means so little. I mean, these are the kinds of people who will go into not-for-profit organizations, who will become maybe, um, you know, social workers, who, you know, like, like yourself, who, who, um, who are driven by um, wanting to help others, you know, because the, they're generally they're people who are happier. They're they're more satisfied. They have more to give. So those are the kind of because like to ask like a person who went into business to kind of like all of a sudden give a hundred percent of their profit away, you know, 
they may not want to do that, but if you present this idea to a not-for-profit organization, you know, as a way to, to ma raise money as opposed to asking for money as, as these organizations traditionally do, then they, they could change the world. I mean, they could, they could um, you know, if you give a, a customer a choice between buying a product that's going to make an individual rich or buying a product that's going to, you know, help out the, the victims of Katrina, I guarantee they're going to pick B. Absolutely. So we have like two minutes left, so mm -hmm. let's focus a little bit on just that aspect. So you're saying that it's not probably not the best idea to go to a local business, um, even though they may really feel and believe fundamentally that the thing to do is to set up a situation where they can, you know, be helpful to the community at large. You know, and by the way, every community has its people that are not that are hungry that are going to bed hungry. Okay, even in America. Yeah, well, on, on another show, we'll, we'll, come, uh, we'll talk about a strategy of how, let's say, if 40 or 50 celebrities got together and introduced 40 or 50 products all at once, a major launching of these products, right. that would generate such publicity that all those products would be extremely successful, and that would encourage so many more celebrities, entrepreneurs, philanthropists to follow suit with their own products. We absolutely need to do that. So why don't we welcome everyone who's viewing today and say that if you have ideas or know people, and celebrities especially, that might be interested in something like this, to email us at, you know, thehappinessshow.com. Yeah, pr what is it, production at thehappinessshow.com? Production at thehappinessshow.com. Okay. Because... Uh, we need help to do this. It's not something, you know, George and I can just go ahead and spearhead. We have like, great ideas and a lot of heart, but we need help with people who are watching, people who are, if you watch the show and you love the show, and uh, even if you don't love the show, if you watch the show, if you're just watching it because you're doing something else, if it's on in the background, it doesn't matter. You can still, uh, you know, you can still help us out by writing to us and letting us know that you're interested in this particular piece because it spreads love. So thank you for watching tonight. Any other closing comments? No, that was great. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we'd like to just say that uh, in the future we're going to explore other topics that are just as interesting and help us better enjoy our lives. So it would be good. Think well. Feel happy. And I hope you join us again next week here on The Happiness Show. So bye-bye from me, Claudia, and George. Have a great Christmas. Happiness is powerful. It's our own lining. Happiness is why we live each day Happiness is destiny So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy